Let's go ahead and take a look at how to determine the number of solutions and the degree of a polynomial just based on a graph and then how to solve for them if we have an equation by factoring. And we'll also take a look at how to kind of quickly sketch a graph based on what our solutions to the equation are going to be. Let's take a look at this function here. We can see that we have this odd function. We can tell it's an odd degree function based on this end behavior. Uh, as x goes to negative infinity, our graph goes to negative infinity. And as x goes to positive infinity, our graph goes to positive infinity. So very characteristic of an odd degree function. And we can kind of get an uh, idea of how many roots or solutions this polynomial is going to have just by looking at the graph. The way it's situated right now, we can see that it crosses the x-axis three times, which would imply that it's going to have three different roots. So three intercepts. implies that this is going to have three, at least, real roots. Now, kind of moving our graph around, we can see that we can change the number of that. But just by moving it up, we can see, well, now we've only got one real root. And if we move it down, we can see again that it has only one real root. But the maximum, no matter how we move it up or down, is three, which implies to us that this is going to have a total of three roots. So the maximum number of real roots we can get is going to be equal to the total number of possible roots for this polynomial. Since it has a total number of three roots, maximum of three roots, we know this is a polynomial of degree three. So the way it's situated right now, all three of those are real numbers because we have three x-intercepts. But like I did before, if we slide it up, if we only have one real number, that just means that the other two roots have to be complex numbers. We can do the same kind of idea here on this next graph. So right now it looks like it's situated we only have one, two, three, four intercepts, but this definitely isn't a quartic equation. We can tell there's too many turns here for this to be quartic. So if we kind of slide this around here looking for a maximum number of roots, we can see that we can get a total of six right here. We have the one out here on the left, a double root right here will be roots two and three. Another intercept here makes 4, and then another double root makes 5 and 6. So we can see we have a maximum possibility of 6 total roots. And the way it's situated now, we can see all 6 of them are real, but it could change depending on the graph. We could have just 1, 2, 3, 4. We could have a double root of just 2 reals, that would make 4 complex, or since this is an even degree function, it's possible to have no real roots and have all six of them be complex numbers. It just depends on the situation from polynomial to polynomial. Now let's take a look at how to actually solve for these roots if we're given an equation. Say we have the equation x cubed minus 9x equals 0. So if we wanted to solve for these roots, we can just go ahead and do this by factoring. We can go ahead and take out the greatest common factor of x so I'll have x times x squared minus 9. And then we can further factor this quadratic term because we can see it's just a difference of two squares. So I'll we'll have x squared times x plus 3 times x minus 3. And our fundamental theorem of algebra, since that says that this has a degree of 3, it should have three roots. And since we're able to factor this completely down to three linear factors, we can see that all three of our roots in this particular problem are going to be real roots. So our first one would be 0 from our first linear factor. Our second one would be negative 3. And our third root would be positive 3. We can go ahead and just plot all of these values on our graph to get a nice quick sketch of what this might look like. Our y-intercept here, since our constant is 0, would be 0, but that just kind of overlays on top of the x-intercept already plotted. And since we see this as an odd degree function, it's going to have the same end behavior as an odd degree function with, of course, a positive coefficient. So it's going to start in the lower left. It's going to work our way through our first intercept, have a maximum somewhere in there, come back down through the second, have a minimum, and then as x goes off to infinity, our graph will continue off to infinity as well. And this is just a real quick sketch of this polynomial.